Movements in currency have been quite dramatic over the past couple of weeks, particularly with the Canadian dollar. The Canadian dollar has declined from about uh, par as it was in June, July of this year, and it's now trading around 130. Um, the reason for the move is a combination of events. One is the massive unwinding of levered investments in commodities, particularly oil in this country. And a combination of that is the flight to safety of the, to the US dollar that's occurring around the world. However, on top of that, we're seeing foreign investments made by Canadian funds into the U.S. that were hedged to take, account, to take account of the currency risk, and those investments have now diminished in value, and so the hedges have to be unwind, which has precipitated even more selling of the Canadian dollar. So we've seen dramatic moves going far beyond people's expectations, and that tends to push the Canadian dollar even weaker than most people expected. Well, the Japanese yen, in concert with the U.S. dollar, are the two currencies that have, been, uh, have shown marked appreciation. And the reason for the Japanese yen arises from what's known as the carry trade. That was a trade that occurred over the past four or five years, where uh, arbitrageurs or sophisticated investors were borrowing in Japanese yen or low interest rate countries, like the yen, where interest rates were one, one and a half percent, taking the proceeds of that borrowing, converting them into New Zealand dollars, Australian dollars, or the currency of a high-yielding country where they could get a return of about seven or seven and a half percent. And it started with, uh, with uh, sophisticated investors such as arbitrageurs, but uh, in the latter stages of that trade, um, Japanese retail investors who had their money invested in the post office in Japan where they were only earning about one percent were converting their savings into high-yielding currencies such as the euro, such as the Australian dollar or the Kiwi dollar and taking advantage of that. Well, of course, as those loans get called, where they borrowed money to take advantage of those, uh, those high yields, as those loans get called and the banks deliver, they have to collapse the investment, in other words, sell off their Australian dollars and New Zealand dollars and euros, and convert the money back into yen to pay off the yen loans that they had taken out. And that's really the reason for the shooting upwards of the yen in the past couple of months. What we're seeing in the world currency markets is extreme volatility at this point as they go beyond most investors' expectations. And I think if you look around the world, we see not only the extreme strength in the US dollar, which is part of the flight to quality that I mentioned, but also the unwinding of these highly levered trades that occurred. Uh, we've seen rescue packages on the part of uh, most uh, industrialized countries of the world. And I think what's, what bears mentioning is that the U.S. banking system is quite transparent. I think most, most, uh, most participants, including the Federal Reserve Board and the U.S. Treasury, are now aware of the extent of the losses and the extent of the questionable investments made by U.S. banks. I don't believe that that's the case in Europe, because Europe has a central bank that doesn't really have regulatory power over the constituent banks. It is really a central bank that controls the amount of euros in supply within the European community but has no leverage over the individual banks. Coupled with that, a number of those banks have lent aggressively to emerging market economies. And as those economies are blowing up, if you look at uh, uh, some economies in Southeast Asia, you look at Eastern Europe, or you look even at parts of Latin America, a lot of dollar loans were made by European banks to those countries, and those have been called into question. And that's another factor that's driving currencies to extreme levels, because as those loans are unwound, and uh, the banks that made those loans try to recapture the principal, they're of course converting them back into dollars and that's contributing to US dollar strength. The question though in Europe is that will all these emerging market, or will all these loans to the emerging market countries be repaid? Because they have far more exposure among the European banks than there is among the US banks. We've also seen in Asia, just to, take, to go across to another part of the world, uh, Asian banks are extremely concerned about the drying up of spending from the U.S. consumer. 
As you know, the Asian economy depended on the U.S. consumer to really boost its growth to the levels it did over the past four or five years. And that they're worried about their